impassioned televised victory speech. Along with your dex capacity. I pledge today that my policies will not be for the elite, but the oppressed, the underprivileged, and the minorities, he said. Once again, a national hero to his followers. Khan shot to global sporting stardom when he came out of retirement more than 20 years ago to captain Pakistan to its only Cricket World Cup victory. Today, the country's military tweeted this image of Khan with fellow cricketer Wasim Akram. Like 1992, all over again. But the 65-year-old now leads an entire country, though he'll need to form a coalition to secure power. His main rival, the Pakistan Muslim League, has alleged blatant vote rigging. The former Prime Minister, Nawaz Sharif, is in jail for corruption. His brother, now forced to concede to Khan in what will be the country's second ever democratic transition of power. With close to 106 million people registered to vote, European Union officials monitored polling stations. 800,000 troops and police were in place. Their fears of violence recognised when a suicide attack near a polling booth in the country's west killed 31 people. His superstar appeal may have landed him the job. Now he must bring to life his campaign promise, a new Pakistan. First there was fire, now flood. Cars have been left upturned after a deluge hit part of the Greek capital, Athens. The downpour struck as the region recovers from deadly wildfires, which authorities now believe were started deliberately. UFC star Conor McGregor has avoided jail over an attack on a bus in New York. The Irish fighter agreed to a plea deal, admitting his guilt. I'm to the DA and the judge for allowing me to move forward. I want to say to my friends, my family, my fans, thank you for the support. And now have to complete five days of community service and an anger management program. A prisoner has jumped on top of a police car in a brazen escape attempt in Texas. He was supposed to be in the back seat, but kicked out the window and climbed onto the roof. The bid for freedom didn't last long. Two support vehicles soon turned up and got him back in custody. It was a win sealed with a kiss. Prince Harry took home the trophy at a polo match in Windsor. It was held to raise money for his charity, supporting vulnerable children in parts of Africa. The Duchess of Sussex was on hand to present the prize, with a peck on the cheek for the runner-up and a real smooch for her husband. On the stock market, Telstra shares climbed four cents. The big banks all finished higher, while Rio Tinto had a moderately better day of trading up 32 cents. The supermarket giants took a hit, with West Farmers down 26 cents, two cents more than rival Woolworths. To commodities and gold is higher, while oil is trading lower. And one Australian dollar is buying 73.88 US cents and a shade over 82 yen. A University of Newcastle professor is set to add to the history books after years of researching massacres of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Lyndall Ryan has completed stage two of a digital map which now includes 250 verified massacre sites between 1788 and 1930. From six to three hundred people were the killed in each me. incident. I was brought up to believe that Australia was peacefully settled. I knew that there were some massacres, but I had no idea of the number that I would find. And of course, this is going to change the way in which we look at the past. She's yet to investigate Western Australia and expects the number of massacres could climb to 500 across the country. The Tigers and Bulldogs might be facing off tonight, but there's one issue that unifies them off the field. Both teams are lending their support to the White Ribbon campaign, aimed at combating domestic violence, the effects of which can echo through families for decades. He was a Dally M winning fullback, possessed a sidestep that would leave opponents grasping at air, and when growing up, Rod Silver would know the sting of domestic abuse. During my upbringing, uh, my father was a drinker and a gambler, so uh, my mother and my brothers and sisters uh, had to deal with it. It never leaves you, uh, but you learn to deal with it and, and move on. But across this week, Rugby League has been dealing with the issue of domestic violence now. 
we identified junior rugby league as an area that we could really uh, tap into and really use the use the participation and the, and the profile of our club to really uh, address this this major issue in Australian society. Young players from across 11 clubs in the Campbelltown district undergoing an awareness seminar put together by the West Tigers and the NRL, along with some footy training as well. And I really believe that as men we need to own the issue. The Issue. The Tigers' opponents this weekend are also big supporters of the White Ribbon campaign. And it doesn't discriminate between areas, so for us, we're trying to get out in our local community and just trying to educate people that it's not okay. For former Bulldog Rod Silver, it feels as if some traction on combating domestic violence is being made. The awareness is getting better. More men are standing up um, and, and getting better at stopping it, so we're getting better. The Tigers issuing the call to action that will unite them with the Bulldogs tonight, except for 80 minutes. Game day, we're on the other side, opposite sides going at each other, but we're all supporting the same cause. Um, you know, it's a great initiative and the West Tigers are 100% behind it. Mike Dalton, NBN News. It's time for sport now with Samuel Jordan. And Sam, plenty of early drama in Townsville. That's right, the Ninth Cowboys Clash has had it all so far. Coming up after the break, big knocks and sin bins as the Knights take the early lead up north. And Sam Kerr all class to see the Matildas beat Brazil. Talk to me. 